This week on the Rumorg Archives, we head back to September 2007 for Rumorg issue number 71. The return of the Living Dead creator Dan O'Bannon lets Rumorg pick his brains for all the dirt on his revisionist 80s punk rock zombie classic, in a feature we call The Day the Dead Rocked the Earth by Dave Alexander. For an underage horror fan in the late 80s, fewer fruits were sweeter or more forbidden than the return of the Living Dead. There were punks, there were zombies, there were even punk rock zombies, and rumor had it that one of them got completely naked. Then there was the gore. You heard it was gross. Bodies were diced, brains were eaten, there was a split dog that was still alive, and there was something truly hideous in the basement called the Tar Man. Truly the ground zero of badass zombie flicks, Return of the Living Dead did well in theaters, besting Romero's own Day of the Dead, which also opened in 1985. On video, however, Return built its genuine cult following, and after being relegated to disintegrating rental tapes for far too long, it finally got a DVD release from MGM in 2003. Creator Dan O'Bannon has been laid low in recent years by an intestinal ailment. His output has diminished. His love for The Return of the Living Dead, however, has not. From his home in California, a mere day after undergoing surgery, the strongly opinionated filmmaker talks about his film. The Return of the Living Dead and The Day of the Dead came out the same year, and your movie made double at the box office what Romero's did. Was it a sign of the times that theater goers embraced the comedy more? Were 80s horror fans in more of a party mood? I couldn't say because I thought Day of the Dead was a pretty strong offering. I don't really know, except for that one single factor, that the market at the time was overloaded with straight, serious horror films. As in Day of the Dead, the military wreaks more havoc than the zombies. Were you making a statement? To tell you the truth, I don't make social commentary films. That's not my vein. I'm not out to teach the world to be good or run through my list of pet peeves. But to some extent, I was influenced by the fact that Romero's dead weren't supernatural. They weren't some type of ghosts. It's rather ambiguous in Night of the Living Dead, but it's science fiction. Something in outer space causes this to happen. I think I may have been influenced by that. The producers told me that they wanted to see a house on a cliff with a military man, and they didn't know where to go with that. I took it and did the best I could with it. Have you ever talked to Romero about the film? I've never met him, I've never spoken to him on the phone. I do know that when it was close to camera time for Return of the Living Dead, he became alarmed because I got a letter from his attorney and so did the producers. I wanted to reassure him that I was staying so far away from the material that it wasn't a problem, and I was very, very interested and curious to hear what he thought of the final film. I've heard mixed reports. The film is iconic for the way it marries the zombie subgenre to those images of punk rock in its characters, soundtrack, and that poster. Why punk? It's simple. I like to be different. There were all these Halloween imitations out there and they always starred a bunch of cute teenagers who one by one got offed by the villain. And these teenagers were clean cut to a point where it was painful. I said, away with the clean cut teenagers. I'll give you your teenagers, but they're gonna be an assortment of punk rockers. And one girl, the girlfriend, was clean cut. Why she would hang around with them? I don't know. You've said it was a pretty hellish shoot, including some serious friction between you and actor Clue Gulliger, who played Bert. It was very tough. Time was the enemy, and we just didn't have enough time to do all the cinematic finesse that I'd have liked to do. Now as for Clue, it is true that Clue and I had agitated each other. Just how heated did it get between you two? There came a time about two thirds of the way through shooting where Clue just popped. I was asking him to do something and he really didn't understand, and he just turned to everyone on set, the cast, the camera crew, and he points at me and says, don't you see what he's doing? He's trying to destroy us all. Then everybody left the set. I was sitting alone and I was just stunned. Well, I actually became afraid of Clue after that. He was carrying around a piece of lead plumbing pipe for his character's weapon, and I had the prop department substitute it for a rubber one that looked the same because I was afraid Clue was going to come after me with a pipe. Well, he didn't, but he was very uncomfortable. He said, where's the pipe I was using? I can't handle this, it's the wrong weight. So, sweating bullets, I gave him the lead pipe. Of course, he didn't attack me. The one final question that all Return of the Living Dead fans are curious about, Dan, do you want to party? I always party. And that's it for this episode of the Rumorg Archives. For our full coverage of The Return of the Living Dead, featuring Dan O'Bannon, Linnea Quigley, Alan the Tarman Troutman, and more, be sure to pick up Room Org number 71, September 2007 issue, now available in print and digital newsstand. Links below. Join us next time for another classic feature from the pages of Room Org magazine. <laughs>